and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is part three in my window box flower series and in this video we're going to be adding more details to the window. If you want to follow along with traditional materials check out part one in this series where I have a list of all the brushes, canvas, and paint that I use. The app that I'm going to be using is Infinite Painter for Android and we're going to go ahead and start by working a little bit more on the wood grain that is on the wall <clears throat> and also the wood grain that's on the shutters. And I'm just kind of adding a few darker lines and then smudging it in right quick. And then I wanted to add just a little bit more of some highlights to the green and the window and you can use a phthalo yellow green if you're following along traditionally and just smudge that in right quick and we don't want any big details on the window reflection and I want to go ahead and sort of add the grass that you can see in the window reflection and this will be the most detailed thing that you'll see in the window so I'm using the Svetlana brush and infinite painter and you can use the script brush if you're following along traditionally and just make a really thin mixture of light yellow ochre and white acrylic gesso and then just kind of um, do half circle strokes to go ahead and make your grass. And I like to use the Svetlana brush in Infinite Painter because it, it sort of gives a spattery look and that looks like there's seed pods on the grass. And I'm also working a little bit more on the window frame. And as you can see, I've been working on it throughout the whole painting, just straightening and re-straightening, trying to make sure that the lines are straight, especially the vertical lines. And you can use the perspective guide to make really nice straight lines too. So I'm using the perspective guide here to make sure that the window sill lines are straight and I'm using a darker color uh, darker brown probably a burnt sienna if you're following along traditionally or a burnt umber and I just kind of want to make sure that those vertical lines are straight because it will really mess up your picture if you don't get the vertical lines straight now the horizontal lines are at a slight perspective angle but as I said in some of the previous uh, videos. I'm not using the guide um, in a traditional sense of where you would just go straight from the vanishing point because um, that goes off my tablet. The vanishing point is just too far over so I'm just kind of eyeballing it by looking at my photo reference and then using the perspective guide to make the slant on the shutters. And so here again, I'm just working on the edges, trying to get kind of the weathered wood look. And I'm adding some knot holes in there to try to get the, the wood pattern, the wood grain pattern on the shutters of the window. And then I pinch it real small, uh, pinch zoom it real small so that I can... Um, see what it looks like and if you're doing this traditionally you would just take a step back from your canvas and look at it from a distance and see how it's doing and see if it's straight if you need to work on the edges again some more and here I'm working on the flower box and straightening the edges on it a little bit adding a little bit of dark on the right side and then I'm working on the hinge mechanism that's underneath the window shutters there and you can just kind of make indications we don't have to put big details for the the latches and the, the hinges and things just go ahead and make the general shape of it and then you can add some highlights where the light is hitting on the metal and so that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm not making any big details on the hinges or anything like that. And so you got, want to go ahead and just kind of add a little bit of some darker lines on the boards that go across the window shutters. 
And again, I'm still working on trying to get that angle straight and working on the angle of the window. And you just have to keep doing this because when you add layers of paint or color, you tend to lose the original drawing somewhat. And that's why I tell you to keep it on the first layer if you're doing this digitally. But if you're doing this traditionally, you do lose sometimes your original drawing so you kind of have to go back and make sure that you've got it correct here and so that's kind of <clears throat> what I'm doing and then you want to go ahead and add a little bit of a light bluish highlight to the hinges and the latches and as I said we don't want any big details put some little dots there to show the screws that are on the latches and just kind of smudge those in and just make it look like the um, reflected light which is going to be blue is sort of shining off of the metal and that just kind of gives it a little bit of a shape to your metal without having to go through um, great big detail but because we don't really need that we want our flowers to be the focal point but we do want things to look and have the correct shape and so that's kind of what I'm doing there is just working on that and trying to get the window straight again the edges are kind of um, wobbly I guess right now so I'm, I'm trying to straighten those out and then I wanted to add a little bit of wood grain so I'm using the Leo brush or something really small and just adding in a little bit of some lines and then you'll go back and you'll smudge those in and if you're following on traditionally you can use your number three round brush and smudge it with your finger or a paper towel or a sponge or something and you don't want to get rid of all the lines but you do want to smooth them in so that it looks like a natural wood grain and you can use sort of a darker color uh, burnt umber or burnt sienna if you're following along with your acrylic paints and here I'm just kind of working on the edge of the window again I didn't think it was straight enough so I'm going back and kind of um, correcting that with a darker color and um, working on the edge of the shutters again trying to get it uh, straight and I'm using the perspective guide as the straight line guide and you can use a t-square or a ruler if you're following along traditionally and then I wanted to go ahead and add the hinges that are on the shutters there and again I'm not going into any big detail I'm just kind of making the shapes of the shutters and just um, adding a little bit of light blue there to show the metallic highlight on it and you go ahead and just soften that you don't want to keep a, a harsh edge there you want to go ahead and and soften that highlight in and then I'm working on the hinge on the bottom same way just adding the shape making it look like the the general shape of the hinge adding a little bit of some light blue and smudging it in just to give that the metallic shine that it has in the shadows there and then I want to go ahead and add the brackets that are on the window and I assume these are the little brackets that keep the window pane into place and so I want to go ahead and just add that there too and just kind of make the shapes with a with black just use black you can use black you can throw a little bit of blue in there if you don't want it to look so flat and then I'm kind of just smudging it in and you want to go ahead and do that all on all edges um, the fourth one doesn't show because the flowers are in front of it so you only need to show three of them and then again I'm marking a little bit more on the window sill trying to get it straightened working a little bit more on the edge of the the shutters and you just have to keep doing that till you get it where you think it looks correct that's just part of the process of painting um, Helen Van Wyck used to say that a painting is a series of corrections and that's what it is you just have to keep working on things 
and correcting them and stepping back and looking and seeing if it looks correct. And then you go back in and you add some more things to it and try to correct it until you think that it looks right. And here I've got it um, on a small zoom to see what it looks like there. And that's just like stepping back from it. So this is the end of part three of my window box flowers. And in part four, we're going to go ahead and start working on adding the details to the flowers. So if you want to see that, hit the subscribe button. And thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below. And I will catch you later.